Hello. Hello. Are we live? I think we're live. All right. Hey, friends. Thank you for joining us or rejoining me. Um, we had some technical difficulties, but I think we've been able to work through those. Um, all right, one second. We're going to test here and then give people a chance to jump back on and then we'll get started. Hello. Hello. I was also saying a minute ago that you and I are both the we're on the young end. I would call us young Gen Xers, younger Gen Xers. But hey, 80. All right. I think it's working. Um, this technology stuff, man, oh, man. We say we're really thankful when it works. Yes. I was also saying All right. So I'm going to take a minute here at the beginning um, just to introduce a little bit, just myself and a little bit, and just share a little bit about why uh, we wanted to get on tonight and have have a conversation. Um, so thank you so much for hopping on and joining us. Um, I am, uh, I am a, are we, are we good? All right, here we go. All right, so I am a um, certified personal trainer, nutrition coach, um, and then I also lead an online fitness community, membership community, uh, that we work out together, but we also focus on um, uh, wellness, nutrition coaching and wellness and healthy recipes. And I have actually called my business at Complete Coaching because while my um, area of expertise is the, um, the physical, um, the body, uh, fitness, nutrition, I fully believe that we are whole people, body, soul, and spirit, mm -hmm. um, and that you really can't separate those things. So um, I look for every possible way to incorporate and encourage um, health in, in other areas emotionally relationally, mentally, and spiritually. So uh, with the um, Jen, who I'm going to share a little bit about, but then I want um, her to introduce herself to y'all as well. Um, Jen's actually a member of the community, so she works uh, an active member. She works out with us um, every week. And every month, we within the community, we have a different um, challenge, focus or challenge. Mm -hmm. And for November, uh, based on member feedback, our challenge has been, our focus has been flexibility. So mm -hmm. we have been talking about the importance of incorporating flexibility training into your fitness routine, um, why that's important. And then um, we've done, you know, some, some short and, and uh, some short workouts that you can easily add in. Um, but Jen is a professional counselor uh, by training with years and years and years of experience and, um, you know, was obviously super excited about the physical piece, but she just chimed in and was like, gosh, what a great opportunity for us to also talk about uh, flexibility in this season and the importance of, uh, thank you, my love, the, the, uh, the importance of um, flexibility in our hearts and in our minds um, as 2020, the year of flexibility, more flexibility than we ever dreamed we'd have to, we'd have to live with. Um, and now we're moving into the holiday season. And I know people are worn out. Um, holidays can be a tough time anyway. Um, and so I am, I'm just so excited that you uh, made that suggestion and, and we've been talking and praying about, um, about this. So we also want y'all to know that this is, this is totally intended to be interactive. So please feel free to ask questions or comment, um, and let us know, uh, where you'd like for us to go. So I am going to turn the mic over to my dear friend, 
Jen, so we go way, way back. Gosh, 20 years, 20, 15 years, 15 years. I won't yeah. just quite that much. 15 years back to we worked at Mercy <laughs> Multiplied together, um, which is an incredible ministry and residential program for uh, girls. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you're up to now. Yes. Well, can you all hear me okay? I can hear yes. you great. All right, perfect. Hi, everyone. So excited just to be here tonight and to join Cassidy. It's so funny to think that we were friends and connected 15 years ago, and then we came all the way back around. And so I just have to say, the Stronger Together community has been like so huge for me. Um, coming into the season, I was like, Lord, I'm not working out the way I need to. I'm not taking care of myself the way to, I need to. So what can I start doing? And then I randomly came across, because I'm not on Facebook a ton, but I randomly came across Cassidy's group. And I was like, I think this may be the answer. And I think I just find that when she tells me what to do, I'm able to do it. And it's been such a blessing and an answer to prayer, which is just so awesome. So, so grateful for that. Um, currently, I actually, I've actually been doing private practice now for 10 years, which is crazy. And so I provide prayer counseling for women. I often say in the community, but I actually have women that I Zoom with now all over the nation, which is awesome. So I'm able just to do prayer counseling and connect with women and allow them to really grow in their relationship with God. And that's just been such a cool thing. So really, really enjoying that. Um, are we good, Cassidy? One more time. I said, are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. trying to turn my volume up a little bit so I can hear okay, you. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, all that being said, I've just been doing this for about 10 years now, and it's just been so, so fun. And I just get to watch women heal up and get freed up. And so as we were talking about flexibility, we were like, okay, how do we jump in and, and have a conversation that's meaningful for people, knowing that there is the um, piece that is the physicality, but also the, oh, we good? We're good. I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm such an amateur. I'm trying to figure out where to look. I'm just, I'm good. I just, I'm like, where do my eyes go? Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you're so awesome. My eyeballs are like all over the place. All right. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're awesome, we are girl. folded. <laughs> Y'all, this is so much fun. So all that being said, we just really are looking forward to having a conversation tonight that's meaningful and that is about the physicality. But also, as I just threw out there, I'm like, flexibility, especially in 2020, moving into the holidays, it's huge to be able to know how to walk in flexibility in this season, even just spiritually. And so I think we'll kind of kick off and just sort of talk through just the definitions, which I think is an important part. Cassidy, before we do that, was there anything else you wanted to say? No, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Let's just dive in and talk about, yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's define flexibility. Hey, let's let's do it. Let's go for it. Awesome. All right. Well, y'all, when we were pulling all these notes together, I just got so excited because you know when the Holy Spirit just breathes on something and you start to go, oh my gosh, this is ministering to me. So so excited to be able to share it with you all too. You so know, it's always helpful to start with a definition. So. When you I'm glad you said that. Hey, really quick. I'm really glad that yeah, you said yeah, that yeah. because same thing. Like I felt like okay. if nobody else was here, <laughs> I need this so much. I mean, I'm yes. So here we go. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So definitions for flexibility include a couple of things, but I think they're so helpful. The first is the capability of being flexed or bent. <laughs> that in itself, y'all. I mean, that's been the year we've been in. Also, another one is being pliable or yielding, um, yielding to influence. And I think even as we talk through that, there's a reality of going, okay, who is influence, influencing us, especially in the season, right? It's taking that assessment and going, okay, Lord, is media, television, social media, is it influencing me? Are friends and family's thoughts or opinions influencing me? I think even at times, and we'll talk a little bit more about this tonight, but this idea of past experiences, whether it's regret or shame or difficulty, or even current circumstances, we have a lot going on. So is there a fear of the unknown or is there a worry that, I mean, that could be a conversation in itself, guys. We could talk about that for the next 45 minutes, but it's a place of going, okay, if I'm in, if I'm in a season of really walking in flexibility and part of that is knowing how to yield to the influence in my life. There's also a very real reality of going, Lord, are you the number one influencer 
in my life because that is our goal, isn't it? To be women of God that know Jesus and that are willing to be influenced by his word, by his truth, by his movement in our lives, the way that he speaks to us. And so really that is that is a part of the heart of our conversation tonight too, of going, okay, being willing to assess. And maybe as we're talking through some things, maybe you write some notes, maybe you type, write down some things of like, I need to really be looking at that. Are there some tweaks or things that I need to shift in? as far as where I'm at and what is influencing me so that I'm able to be yielded to the right things. I'm able to be pliable to the movement of the Holy Spirit. And then I'm not just shifting and moving and allowing fear or any other area to come in based on what's influencing me. Does that make sense, everybody? Does that sound good? Yeah. And I'm already thinking of a question. Yeah. So you can tell me if you're, if, if, you know, if I'm getting too far ahead already, Girl, go for it. Um, and, you know, in a second, I think we're going to get into some of like, just as we were talking through some of the benefits of, of physical flexibility training, we were just like, wow, at how they, at how it, how it translates to mm -hmm. life really. Yes. But talk to us for a minute, Jen, about how do we, this all sounds so great, um, theoretically, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how do we stay flexible mm -hmm. in on November, what's today? At the end of November 2020, <laughs> right? When we're worn out, exhausted, stretched, stressed out, like, and now we're going into the holiday season and mm -hmm. we're already so... Uh, spread thin and frazzled and tired. How do we stay flexible? Mm -hmm. I think that's an epic question. And it's so funny because, and we'll talk more about this too, but I've had been having, even today I had a client and we were talking about this where she came in and she said, Jen, I feel like I'm crying all the time. I'm sad all the time. Mm. I'm looking at the circumstances. I don't see any of this big stuff. Like most stuff feels okay. But as we started to outline it, I was like, it's November of 2020. Mm. I mean, that in itself, like there is such a grace that we need to be intentionally giving ourselves mm. the fact that we have lived this long in this year and not out of like, you know, a super negative place, but, and we'll talk about this, but I think there's a reality of going, you know what, Lord, this year has been really hard and there's been a lot of loss and there's been a lot of grief and there's been, you know, disappointments and things that have come to all of us, no matter what we've walked through, whatever we've experienced. And so I think part of it is just acknowledging, like, I'm tired. I'm weary. Most of the times and we're excited and we're looking forward to it. But even in that sense, there's a lot of things that have shifted out. There's pride changes and plans. There's just a lot on our plates. And I think the number one way of really getting flexible, and I, I want you to speak to this too, Cassidy, because you mentioned earlier from your um, devotion this morning, there's some things the Lord showed you, but I think number one, and so often this can kind of be like, duh, as woman of God, but if we are not spending time with the Lord, if we are not giving him a voice into things, if we are not spending time hearing for what he has to say, whether that's through his word, through his Holy Spirit, are we in worship? Are we, are we really pursuing his perspective and his grace over our lives? Y'all, we're just going to remain tired because there is such a soul weariness right now that I think most of us are dealing with. And so if we give him the Prince of Peace, the restorer of our souls, the you know, the living water, if we give him space to come in and to speak to things, he's so faithful to do it. Um, it's such a meaningful thing. So Cassidy, other thoughts that you have on that? Because I know. Yeah, this I appreciate. Thing. Yeah, thanks. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing, too, just that, you know, that we really do have to give ourselves extra grace in this season. You know, I've talked to a couple of um, friends even this week, like I think. For a lot of people, you may not even still know what Thanksgiving is going to look like. Right. You know, I think it's literally the need to be able to um, adapt mm -hmm. moment by moment. But that gets really hard when we're so we're so weary, right? Mm -hmm. um, but just talking to a friend who was just legitimately disappointed about about people that you know family that they weren't going to get to see at Thanksgiving. You know, mm -hmm. and so I think it, it's both and, and we talked about this a little bit, and I know that you've had these same conversations, um, mm -hmm. even, I'm sure, even today. 
But I think it's it's being willing to uh, acknowledge the difficulty, um, mm-hmm. be bummed and sad about it. You know, legitimately acknowledge that that it is it is a loss. Um, mm-hmm. But then at the same time, be willing to go with it and roll with it. And really, uh, like I shared with you earlier, trust the Lord. You know mm-hmm. that that it's going to be okay and not not get offended and not take mm-hmm. take offense because everybody's doing the best that they can right now with the information that they have and and everybody's circumstances are a little bit different um the risks are a little bit different for everybody uh you know but i also think at the same time i found myself in the last week um man just kind of at the end of my rope honestly and I just kept trying to talk myself out of it. Like, and you know, and I was, I was spending time, <laughs> I was doing my, having my quiet times in the morning and really doing what I know to do, but I would still walk away from that time. And a couple hours later, like I am struggling, like I am, yeah. you know, I'm having a hard time. So I think it's, it's, it's both. And, and that's one of the things I think too, that mm-hmm. jumped out to us was um, one of the main benefits of uh, physical flexibility training is that you uh, your risk of injury is so much lower. And so think mm-hmm. about how that how that translates. When we're able to be flexible in life and and go with it and trust the Lord that it's gonna it's gonna be okay, we're much much less likely to get to get hurt to get our hearts yeah. hurt, right. Mm-hmm. I think that's so good. And another thought that comes to mind that I know we're talking about as well is another client because that's I counsel all the time, awesome women of God. And that's just what comes to mind. But I was working with another girl just yesterday and we were talking through some of the similar things and we were in prayer and the Lord just showed her. He said, you know what? This year wasn't a waste. It wasn't a wash. Mm. There, there was a marking on your life, even in that really hard season of quarantining that March, April, May kind of season where we're all tucked away for three months going, what is the world right now? He said that season was marked in your life by learning intimacy with me. Mm -hmm. That season was marked by you learning to really hear my voice, to connect with me, to know that I am able to comfort you. Things that would not maybe have necessarily happened in the same way this year if you had not been tucked away in quarantine for three months. And so for her, she walked away going, The Lord's not only just giving me permission to acknowledge the hard and to see it for what it is and to grieve what I need to grieve. He's also challenging me to pick up a perspective that he's carrying and going, Lord, what did you accomplish this year? What did you mark this year by? What are some things that you did in my life that maybe I don't even see in fullness? And I've been encouraging a lot of people and I'll be doing the same thing over the next six weeks or so as we round up 2020 really spending some time to assess, like, as we're talking about flexibility today, Lord, how am I doing in that area? But in the bigger vantage point, like, what is this year held? What are maybe some things that I've missed? Because it's been so dang hard. What have you actually accomplished through this? Because you don't waste things, Lord, and we know that. But when we're able to look back and assess what God's done, it's mind-blowing to be able to see what he has done and how he has not wasted this year. And how he's actually, I would submit, has submitted, positioned us for things to come, even as we move into this next season of time, whether it's 2021 or the other things he's calling us to. And that's really powerful when we're able to really glean that information from him too. That's so good, Jen. I mean, literally we would not be sitting here right now. I mean, that is, that is something, you know, the, the, my online community was, was came from the, came from the pandemic, came from being home, (laughs) came for a need for us to be connected and to mm-hmm. still be able to move our bodies and connect with other people and get that accountability and encouragement and coaching from your living room, you know, yeah. and you've been able to reconnect online. So yeah. that's so good, you know, and, and it's, it is, it is, we, you know, Brian and I do take that time at the beginning of a new year, at the end of a year to mm-hmm. look back and reflect. And, you know, I think it will be really easy to start the laundry list of terrible, of the, you know, of the really hard and really terrible. But I think that's it. It's looking for, Mm -hmm. looking for the good and looking Mm -hmm. for, you know, looking for the blessing. Um, You know, because we do, we have a choice. We can, we can choose to be inflexible and 
and angry, you know, and yeah. some of that is going to come and is okay, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and maybe you can talk to us about that a little bit, but, you know, we can also choose to, to trust the Lord, yeah. right? And yeah. to, to let go a little bit. Let's talk about control and anger a little bit. Yeah, totally. And I think too, even as we're, you know, talking about these definitions, if I can just insert this piece too, because it's coming to mind right now, as we're looking at, you know, when you do a definition, you think of the synonyms or the things that are similar or the same. And I love these words that just talked about resiliency, pliability, the idea of just really choosing to operate from those things instead of the yucky things. But when you look at the opposite of these, it's talking about inflexibility, being unadaptable, unchangeable, rigid, stiff, all of the things that are just super, super easy to fall into when things are hard, like you just said. And so there's such a power, guys, like when we can, when we can catch the understanding that we have such a choice over the way we think therefore the way we feel, therefore the way we act and the way that we operate, there is such an empowerment and an authority we get to walk in because we don't, then circumstances don't get to dictate to me how I feel or how Mm -hmm. I think. It doesn't mean I ignore the hard, like we've made very, very clear, but there's a reality of going, okay, just like, for instance, with physical flexibility, because there's so many correlations, it was so fun as we were pulling this all together, physical flexibility. If I decide I am going to get my splits, at 41, which I'm not saying I've decided that, but I am saying if I chose that, it's going to take some work for that to become something that I'm able to do. Let's just be honest, right? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to decide you want to do the splits and go sit down and do the splits, right? No, it's going to take some choices. It's going to take me showing up and working on that physical flexibility. I would submit when we're talking about flexibility of heart and mind. It takes some real intentionality and some choice to be able to learn how to move forward in that flexibility of heart and mind. Like it doesn't just happen, girls, especially in the midst of all that we have going on in our lives. And so making the decision to really choose into this flexibility, choosing to spend time with God, choosing what we know to do. Like you said, just said, Cassidy, sometimes we just got to keep showing up and doing the thing we know how to do. And trusting that the Lord's going to breathe on that. He's going to give us what we need. He's going to surround us with the things that we really, really need. You know what I mean? So here's a question about, uh, Nandy has a question about really practicing what we're talking Mm -hmm. about. You know, so she asks, so as a new mom, she's a first time mom. And I think this question really translates because I could ask this question, you know, in a different way. How can I model that for my son? Like, what does that practically look like? How do we practice that? You know, Mm -hmm. like she asked then, like, count to 10. You know, (laughs) I've actually found myself needing to do that quite a bit this week. That just, I don't feel okay. I'm going to actually walk away for a few minutes and breathe. And so talk to us about that. Yes, girl. Well, hi, Mandy, by the way. It's so good to see your little self. Congrats on all the things in your life. Okay, so. My goodness, that baby. Oh, so I think it's like legit. It is counting to 10. It is stepping away. It is all of those things. But I think it also, and I think now is a perfect time to jump into it. It's even going, okay, Lord, in the areas of my life where maybe I struggle with the flexibility, before I can model that to anyone, I need to be someone that knows how to get to the root of what's happening. Because if I'm struggling with flexibility in my life and I'm, you know, I'm getting into a place of control or I'm getting into fear or I'm getting into worry, I'm not seeing myself as pliable. Like, you know, Cassidy, I'm sure she'll speak to this a little bit too, but even in her devotional board, we're showing her like this unbelief and all these things that can kick up when things are hard or like as a new mom, man, as a new mom with the baby. And the best day, there's just things that come up where you're like, holy Jesus, come now, help me, (laughs) right? All of the things. But I think there's a very real reality of like, I can try to manage all of the things that are going on and that will work okay. But I think it's a difference between, of choosing between good and great is what I found over the years. Like I can manage all of the control and the fear and I can try to do all the things and that's good. Or I can get to the root of what's really happening and going, Holy Spirit, I'm giving you permission to start to speak to me 
about why this is so hard for me. Why am I in control? Why am I in fear? Why am I in worry? Why am I so weary? Like what is happening so that I'm able to then go even deeper about what am I believing? What are the things that are in my head and my heart that you're not saying, Lord, that the word of God does not speak over my life? And I think that that's where such a cool modeling happens of going, okay, my mom, especially as your beautiful son gets older, he's going to start to see mom knows how to walk in self-control when she's tired. Mom knows how to speak truth out of her mouth, even when she's not feeling it. Mom knows how to pray into situations. Mom knows when to leave the room for 10 minutes because she's about ready to lose her mind. Like she knows self-care. She knows all of those things. And so I think that it is the difference between going, okay, do I settle into the good of just managing the things or do I take the time to go to the great to really get to the root of what's actually operating under these things? Whether, I mean, even thinking about like people pleasing and all the stuff that can kick up that's like legit in our lives that fuels these places where we get rigid and stuck and inflexible. It's all that kind of stuff. Ha ha. Yes. I'm just over here like, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I mean, and I always like anytime I'm in session, I'm like, does that make sense? So y'all will have to be like, yeah, like that's tracking because it's one thing to kind of speak to these things. But if it starts to resonate, that's our prayer that the Holy Spirit takes what we're talking about. And you go, oh, that's right. Because if I can't get to the real reason I'm doing these things, I'm never going to overcome it, guys. And if I don't overcome it, then how do I pass that on to the next generation? How do I pass that on to the people that are in my life, whether it's my kids, whether it's you know, my family, whatever. It's just a matter of just, it's, and I feel like the Lord's saying, even in those situations of going, okay, I'm so weary. The last thing I want to do is go ask a conversation or have a question, like ask a question or have a conversation with the Lord. Like I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. But if we press through the weariness, that's when the Lord meets us and gives us that insight that we desperately need in whatever capacity. But I think especially based in the season in 2020, it's huge. It's such a huge piece of it. I think that's, I think that's, I think you really, oh, sorry. Did we? No, go girl. Okay, sorry. I lost your <laughs> audio for a second. I think that's really it. I think you absolutely 100% nailed it because, you know, with the good, and I found in trying, I can, I've, I've done enough work that I can identify those things and I can mm -hmm. try um, to do that on my own. You know, I can do the good. But, mm -hmm. but I wear myself out. Like I'm already tired and then I'm even more tired. And that's something we talk about a lot in the community is that, you know, when you show up for your workouts, you know, you mm -hmm. may be feeling tired. But what happens when you start to move your body is that you get that surge of energy, right? And yeah. so we talk a lot about we're, we're showing up, you know, uh, to actually receive the energy, right? Not mm -hmm. to expend it but you know but to transition back there it is when you take it another level um and really go for uh go for the great then and it's it's what you know it's it's the letting go right it's the not only getting to the root of it but really being able to quit quit trying to figure it all out right because ultimately then what what it gets down to is that we don't believe it's, it's really the sin of unbelief, right? We don't believe mm -hmm. that God is good or that God's mm -hmm. got it or that mm -hmm. he's working when we can't see that he's working. Yeah. Um, and that's oh. what, you know, and that's what I struggle to, to remember when I'm in it, you know, and when I'm mm -hmm. tired, when I can't, I'm, I need that perspective and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's so true. And I think so often our job, you guys, this takes off some pressure, is to show up. Mm -hmm. It's just to show up to go, Lord, I don't have it today. Like, wow. for instance, how often do we have to show up to our workouts? Yes. Every time I'm like, come on, Lord, I know I need to do it. So I'm going to show up because I'm glad I will. And I'm glad I did. But I think it's very much similar as far as our times with the Lord of going, Father, I, I'm simply showing up with my hands open because I don't know. I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm whatever I am, I'm sad. I don't even know why I'm sad, but I'm sad. And 
the more that we're able to pour those things out to the Lord, the more he's then able to reach in and meet us and give us that truth and that perspective, like you said, that we're just incapable of pulling out on our own. I think one of the most healing things I've ever experienced in my life is getting to the point where I'm like, I don't know the answers, Lord. Whether that's in my counseling, I come in with zero plan typically because that's when Holy Spirit shows up and does what he wants us to do. But even in my own life, like I, I'm okay with the fact that I don't know the answers because here's the cool thing. I have access to the one who does. So there is such an ability to be able to receive what I need from him. It's just a matter of pressing in and allowing him the space and like I said, sometimes that's literally just showing up and be like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to turn on some worship music. I'm going to listen and see what it is that you show me, Lord, and taking off the pressure that I have to have all the answers or have it figured out. It's a meaningful place to be for sure. Yes, I love it. Okay, so <laughs> let's transition for a minute. You I, you had made a note about this, and I, absol- I, got, I, I love this. Okay, so what happens... Um, and I'm looking for your exact wording because it was so good. You can, you can, you can pipe in, but then it's possible to be too flexible, right? Okay. So just like in our bodies and, and this is, you know, with personal training, this is something that we can really get in and focus on. We develop muscle imbalances, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, either muscles that are overactive and get tightened and then that opposing muscle gets gets lengthened and underactive. So we have to strengthen those mm-hmm. underactive muscles and stretch those overactive muscles. So talk to us a little bit about, uh, can we be too flexible? <laughs> <laughs> well, as we were pulling all this together, I was like, okay, Lord, we're pushing to be flexible, we're being flexible. Then I thought, wait a minute. There are those- <laughs> oh, you good? Oh no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm going with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? (laughs) Okay, awesome. So there's the reality of the people that we need to be flexible. That's probably the majority of us. But then there may be some women who are listening who are like, I'm probably too flexible. Mm. And part of the power of all this conversation is going, perhaps for you, for instance, if you kind of tend to, forgive me if this sounds at all hurtful in any way, but if you're kind of the doormat, if you don't have a lot of boundaries, Mm. if you kind of just let people do the thing, Maybe this isn't a discussion of you being more flexible. Maybe part of your um, power and part of the challenge tonight is for you to start flexing your muscles of boundaries. Maybe it's beginning to say no. Maybe it's beginning to use your voice. Maybe it's, like Cassidy said, starting to work some of those muscles that haven't been worked in the way they need to so that you're in a balanced, healthy place. So it was, it was something that kind of came to us recently where I was like, yeah, we need to kind of hit on that part too, because a lot of us need to work in flexibility. Maybe we bend towards the control or the, those parts and pieces, but maybe there's a reality of the people pleasing or the feeling like you don't have a voice or you can't say no, or your boundaries are really not great. Realizing that for all of us, flexibility is going to look different. Even in this, this wide arching discussion of this idea of flexibility, For some of us, that may mean we need to really work some muscles that we haven't in a while in our relational dynamic, maybe in our time with the Lord. Maybe we're having this conversation tonight and you're like, I don't know the last time I actually sat and just prayed or opened my Bible or put my spiritual disciplines to work. If there's anything along the lines that we're talking through tonight that are encouraging you, then I think it's it's going, where are the muscles in me that I need to kind of put back to work? so that I can get strong, maybe again, maybe for the first time, but putting those things to work is just huge. And y'all, when we do it, sometimes it's the little bit, a lot starts to shift things. And suddenly we're in a healthier, stronger place, whether it's emotionally or physically. Um, yes, I was just about to say, if you're just joining us, we're totally taking questions and comments yeah. about uh, flexibility for this season. Um, uh, AD is just says she feels like she needs flexibility with the members of her household and the boundaries <laughs> with those outside of it. So that's, mm-hmm. I think, I, I think that's it. It's, it's both and it's both. And oh my God. yes. And how faithful the Lord is to show us the both. And like I can think of even in the last year or so, just some conversations I had to have with the Lord about extended family. Like, Lord, what does this look like in certain dynamics and how do I operate here and how do I not? And so I think, I think one of the other things I love about the Lord, there's a long list, but he's so strategic guys. Like when we spend the time of going, Lord, how do I do the thing? Like, even like Nandy said earlier, like, how do I, you know, really show my, my kiddo this, how do I model this well? Or 
How do I set these boundaries? He loves to take us to the war room table and give us the strategy and the next steps in the way to operate and how to do things if we take the time to ask the questions. And I think that's the piece that's missing sometimes. I think sometimes we either forget or don't know that the Lord loves, loves, loves to give us strategy. He loves to give us next steps. He loves to show us how to be more flexible or how to have boundaries because it almost feels like it's a both and. How do we glean that from him? It's, it comes from really spending that time with him and asking the questions and taking the time to really go, Lord, where's the strategy in this? Because I don't know, not only do maybe I know, don't know what's at the root or what's happening, but once you get that revelation, then going, okay, now what do I do with that, Lord? How do I put that to work in my life so that then I can move forward in some new ways? And he's, I just, I watch every single time I ask those strategic questions, he has amazing things to give me download on that I never in a million years could come up in my, with in my humanity. He's just so, so good to do that every, every time. It's so good. I love it. Yeah, it's really <laughs> is. It is. It's that it's balance is, is the word that I'm thinking about. And that's a benefit. Yeah you know, physical mm -hmm. ability training as well. And that's important posture and, yeah. and, and balance. And then we're, we're able to be agile, you know, I think mm -hmm. ability, you know, um, better, better, we're better, better performance, um, yeah. you know, greater strength and then, and less pain, you know, mm -hmm. and it's so applicable. It's so applicable. Um, so, Mm -hmm. you have anything else for us, Jen? Well, I think just really, I mean, the final thoughts that really come to mind is, like we said, how do we kind of create this flexibility of heart? And I think we've touched on a little bit of that. But I think if there's anything to take away, I think it's a matter of going, okay, how is my two-way conversation with the Lord going? And some of you, that may be something you're like, I operate in that. I know how to hear from the Lord. We have conversations all the time. Some people, I think there's, a, I think there's many people within um, the world of Christianity that love God and know God that maybe don't even realize that he's able, able to really actually speak to us mm -hmm. in a variety of different ways. And I think so often there's such a power. I know that's been game changer for me in every way when I started to learn like, oh, I can actually hear from the Lord. He can actually communicate with me. This isn't something I just have to figure out in my conversations with people or maybe even in my time with the word, all of that's super important. But there is an intimacy and a connection with the Lord that he has for us as his sons and daughters that is actually pretty easy and there's a beauty to it. And so I think part of the takeaway that I love in this whole conversation is beginning to go, okay, how do I learn to hear the voice of God? There's a ton of awesome books out for that, but I have found that the, it's the simplicity of going, I'm gonna quiet my heart and I'm gonna simply ask a question and start to see what comes to mind. It can be a thought, it can be a still small voice, it can be a picture, there can be confirmation. There's a lot of different ways the Lord speaks, but I think really going in any area of my life, whether it's flexibility or not, how do I begin to access the Lord in such a way that he can start to really give me what I need, especially in the weary seasons, especially in the seasons where we have a lot of question marks, especially when there's a lot of things in our bowl. <laughs> We're like, where do I even begin with this? I think it's just a place of really learning how to access the Lord in that way. Um, and it's, it's game changer when we do that as well. And so, well, yeah, go. Yeah. Well, and he wants to, I mean, he, he yes. wants to connect with us. He wants to speak with us, to speak to us, you know, yeah. and I think about too, it's, it's, you know, those seasons of difficulty and trial uh, mm -hmm. where we're, where we're desperate, you know, where we're, mm -hmm. where we're hurting, where we're anxious, where we're needing that, mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe, maybe you can't see it when you're in the middle of it, right? When you're in the yeah. middle of the, the forest, but looking back, man, it's those mm -hmm. toughest seasons that I can look back on and see and see him. Yeah. And, and know, you know, the closeness, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's it. It's an opportunity to really, to really seek and to trust that, that he will meet you in your seeking. Absolutely. And he'll give us that awareness and that understanding that we need that then moves us forward. Cause none of us want to be stuck. That's not a fun feeling. So knowing that he so has this fullness. And I think Really, honestly, I think it will be the last point is even as we're praying into all this, realizing like, what if 
what if this concept of flexibility, as you were just talking about Cassidy with the physicality of it, it brings balance, it, it does all these things, the flexibility physically, but as we think about flexibility of heart, it prevents us from more hurt or helps us to move from it, it brings balance. But what if it's actually a key to setting us up for new levels of healing and freedom in our lives? Like what if there is a key to that that the Lord's actually highlighting from our even our conversation tonight, but I think even over this month, that it's not just about the physical piece, it's about the heart piece. And as we move in that, I just have really felt like there just may be a key to all of this that the Lord has for us as we kind of think and pray into that as we head into the rest of this year. So, so good. Thank you so much, Jen. You are welcome, my friend. Uh, your time and for sharing just your wisdom and expertise and really, yeah. really going there with us. Um, but how can we find you? How can we, if we wanted to get in touch with you, how can we find you? <laughs> For sure. If y'all want to get in touch with me, I mean, of course, Facebook Messenger is a way to go about that. But y'all can also email me. I've created an email for my counseling and it's the email is Simple Freedom Connect. So Simple Freedom Connect at gmail.com. Um, I've sort of over the years have titled the work that I do kind of just this simple freedom that healing isn't easy. There's there's a cost and there's a reality to that. But when the Lord moves in, he brings a simplicity. He brings an ease to things through his spirit. Um, that's just really, really powerful. So if anybody wants to contact me, you can message me on Facebook or you can email me at simplefreedomconnect at gmail.com. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. Right. Because yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not it's not easy, but the alternative is, you know, is right is worse you know it's it is it's both it's both painful and it's both hard you know yeah. um but the the payoff and the reward for showing up and doing the work is is so great so um i'm just so grateful for you and so thankful to have you a part of the stronger together online membership community and so loving uh, working out with you and being on this journey with you um if y'all are interested in the community, you can try it for a week for free. So uh, my website is just CassidyManning.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook um, and come on over and try it out. Check it out for free. It is just an incredible group of women uh, that are showing up and that are encouraging one another. And it's just, it's been, it's been really fun. It's been really special. So um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for hopping on and being a part of this conversation. And I hope, I wish you all a very happy, very yeah. flexible Thanksgiving. <laughs> and if we don't see you, uh, the same with Christmas, mm -hmm. um, and yes, and then, and then the new year, it's all coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you so much, Cassidy, for having me. It's such a treat. Oh, and we just bless each and every one of you ladies that are watching and those that will watch in the days to come as well. Well, yes. Why don't you close us out? It'd be great. Yes, girl, I would love it. Well, Father, we just thank you so much for our time. We thank you for even in this season, we don't love the screens, God, but you have expanded the reach in so many ways, God, and just your truth and your wisdom and your glory and your goodness. And so we lift you high, Father, above every person that's watching now and that will, Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit for your presence, for your goodness, for the way you communicate with us, Lord, the way you strategize with us, Lord, and the way you bring us into new levels of healing and wholeness, God, that is what you desire to do. And so we thank you for that, Lord, that there is nothing that is too hard for you. So whatever we're faced with tonight and in the days to come, even as we round the corner to Thanksgiving, I thank you, Lord, that you've gone before us, that you're making every crooked place straight and that, Lord, you are just undergirding us and strengthening us and just giving us that refreshing power in our lives, Lord, that we need to really, it's like I see us, Father, instead of limping across the finish line of 2020, I pray, Lord, that we're sprinting across because you're empowering us and giving us what we need. And so we bless you, God, with our time. I thank you for Cassidy, for the woman of God she is, for all of her hard work, for her community. And we just thank you, Father. And so we seal up our time and we bless you in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Have a great all night. Right. See y'all soon. Right. Bye, y'all. Bye.